Magic can get expensive. If you are trying to follow the spells in books, particularly if they're traditional spells and you live in places other than North America and perhaps Northern Europe, it can actually be really difficult to get some of those herbs. So what do you do? Well, you go to the supermarket and you learn about your herbs and you substitute your herbs the same way as sometimes you have to do when it comes to cooking. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you five common supermarket herbs that you can use in your magic for love, protection, and prosperity. But before we dive in, hi, I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com. If you're new to the channel and you wanna learn more about Wicca and witchcraft, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos. And if you're ready to really take your Wiccan practice seriously and you've been looking for a teacher or a group of people to join, then have a look at Mystery Witch School 101 Academy. It's an online school where you can get together with other people from all around the globe. We get together twice a month uh, to celebrate the new and full moons, as well as there being a whole 12 month course there in everything that you need to know to start your Wiccan practice. If you're interested in looking at that, the link to that is in the description field below this video. Now I like to do magic on a budget. I don't believe in spending a lot of money on magic, especially if you're doing financial magic, because if you're doing financial magic, you're probably wanting more money than you're going to be spending on the spell. A lot of spells in traditional books will require certain types of herbs because where those spells come from, those herbs grew really, really well and that's what they used. But now that all of these spells are available to people all over the world, they're going to be, you're going to be in a place possibly where you are wanting to do a spell for money or for luck or for love. And the recipe there is going to be full of some herbs that you just don't have and may be really difficult for you to obtain or to grow. Uh, or to import. So you need to be able to understand your correspondences, what the different herbs correspond to, so that you can learn to substitute your herbs. Now like cooking, if you're substituting a, a, an ingredient in a recipe for another ingredient, it is going to change the flavor of your meal. So that's the same with herbs. It's going to change the flavor of your spell, but it's, it's a subtle thing. It's not like it's going to change it in any really serious way, like it's not going to stop the spell from working. Uh, if you substitute one herb that um, has really strong prosperity properties to another herb that's got really strong prosperity properties, it's just it's going to maybe change the flavor of, of how that money comes to you perhaps, but it will be something that is subtle. So don't let it stop you from doing your magic. So the five herbs I want to talk about today are rosemary, cinnamon, basil, bay and clove. You should be able to find them really easily in the supermarket and also some of them will be quite easy to grow as well. Now all of these herbs are herbs that correspond to the fire element. I didn't do that deliberately. It just happened to be that they're all fire herbs. There are herbs, of course, that correspond to other elements as well. These just happen to be fire. So let's begin with rosemary. Rosemary for me is really about cleansing and protection. You can use it dried in a bundle the same way that people use sage. It does the same job. It actually really does do a lot of purifying uh, it's got a very strong astringent pro property, so it is a great antibacterial uh, if you're using it uh, for sort of medicinal reasons and also uh, for your skin. But it's also got that in the magical sense as well. So it's great at um, helping you if you're having to remove negative energies or negative entities to really, really powerfully cleanse and protect your space. It's a really powerful herb. Don't underestimate it. If you can't get it in a bundle and use it to uh, sane or smoke your environment, then use the dried rosemary that you'd get from the supermarket and put that in some water, let it sit in the water for quite a few hours and then strain it. And then use that water to either spray your, spa your space in a spray bottle or mop your space. So there's various different ways that you can get that rosemary out 
or you can even put the dried rosemary um, onto a charcoal block and uh, burn it that way and use it as an incense. Rosemary is also used for love and lust magic. It's been used to make oneself more attractive and it's also used to help attract uh, other people to you. It is a little bit more on the lust side of attraction, so it's more about sort of that more chemical, physical attraction to start off rather than it being more the emotional attraction that say rose itself would give, but it does help with that initial attraction sage of love. So certainly use it in as part of your recipe uh, if you're using herbs uh, for love. So maybe combine rosemary with rose uh, in your magic. Rosemary is great for clarity. If you're feeling fuzzy in the head, you only really have to just break some off and sniff it and it can help bring, wake you up and give you a little bit more clarity, get rid of that brain fuzz. So if you're doing spells for success in exams, uh, then use rosemary. Next up is cinnamon. Cinnamon for me is the prosperity herb. It's used for prosperity in regards to mostly finances and I love using it. I have done a video on using a cinnamon ladder to help money flow into your home. You can use that ladder also uh, if you're wanting to do protection magic because cinnamon does also have a protective aspect to it. It corresponds to the sun as well and you can use it as a powder. I like to use it for prosperity magic or money magic by actually rolling the candle in the cinnamon powder and uh, working with the cinnamon that way rather than necessarily using an oil. You can use an oil, but again, oils are expensive. It doesn't cost much to go down to the supermarket and get some cinnamon powder and um, roll your candle uh, in your cinnamon powder and using cinnamon that way. If you're using cinnamon as a substitute for something else, uh, it is a fiery herb and uh, it does have a bit of a fiery bite to it, uh, but it's used so much in financial magic and attracting money that you can pretty much use it all the time if you're, you're trying to um, increase your finances. And cinnamon was also used in lust magic as well. So you can, again, depending on what side of love you're wanting to go with, you can use the cinnamon in combination with your rosemary if you're wanting to add a sort of more of an attraction and sort of like a lust side to things. Um, or, but if you're looking more for love, then you would be, I wouldn't go so much for the cinnamon, I'd be looking more at rose. Next up's basil, another money herb for me. Pop some dried basil that you buy from the supermarket into your wallet or into your purse. Uh, you can carry it with you in, um, money bags and uh, use it to attract money. Roll your candle in it. You can roll it in cinnamon and in basil if you're wanting to use both herbs for your financial magic. Uh, use basil. It's an all-round herb. Great for love. It's another love herb. Instead of the sun though, it's associated with Mars, so it's got a little bit more courage to it. So if you want to, you want to attract um, love into your life and you're wanting it to be a little bit more perhaps passionate and um, also have more confidence with it, then basil is your friend. <laughs> it's uh, something you can drink basil as a basil tea. I don't think basil tea is really my favorite thing, but um, it is a way that you can drink it as part of um, giving yourself that, that extra edge when it comes to attraction. Uh, use it with rose, roses for attracting love. It's a great protector. Basil has been used for protection as well. It's great for protecting your money. So if you're wanting to do a money spell where you're attracting money, but also protecting the money that you've attracted, then include some basil in there because not only will it help bring the money in, it also help protect the money as well. So don't forget good old basil. And it, it tastes really good in cooking too. So you always wanna have it on hand just for that reason. Next up's bay. Now bay leaves are great because you can write on them. You can write your wishes on them because bay is connected with your wishes. It's a success herb. So get your bay leaves, write a single word, or you could even do a little sigil or a rune on your basil for whatever it is you're wanting success with and then you burn that leaf to bring you that success. People use bay a lot for money because it's also associated with bringing in money and prosperity, but it's more about success with your money. So if you're wanting to build a career or a business, 
bay is a really really good one to add there because it's bringing that success aspect to it that's that's broadening it um, so it's not just about getting the money flowing like cinnamon it's also bringing success around any venture that has money associated with it so think of it that way so add it to your cinnamon and i even can scrunch up the bay leaves really really fine and um, roll the candle in that too uh, you can use it that way it's associated with the sun also people use bay for binding so this is where you're trying to stop somebody from harming you either through magic or through some sort of more mundane means so you can actually write the person's name down on the bay leaf you can try wrapping some black or red uh, thread around the bay leaf okay and then putting it in the freezer for example and um, freezing uh, that person's ability to be able to harm you so that's one way that you can use bay leaves for binding and psychic powers so if you're doing any kind of work like scrying for example you could burn some bay leaf so that you can get a little bit more in tune with your psychic abilities as well and the last one is clove clove is associated with love got a Jupiter energy so it corresponds to the planet Jupiter so clove's about expansion so if you're wanting to expand a relationship or expand your love expand your ability to be able to attract then clove is a good way to work with that when you're looking at your herbs look at what planets they're associated with because that's what gives them that that edge so what gives clove a different edge to say basil is that basil is associated with Mars and cloves associated with Jupiter so even though you can use them both for love magic for example they're going to have a different sort of energy because Mars is, is about fiery passion and and uh, the warrior aspect and courage and all of that sort of thing whereas Jupiter is about expansion so it really depends what you're looking for as to how you tweak your spells uh, clove is used to stop gossip it's been used to protect against slander and the way this can happen is that you can actually burn clove so if you get a pin and you stick the pin in the actual clove and then you burn the clove and then pop it into a little bowl of water it's a great way to stop gossip if you want to crush up your clothes and then use them as like an incense um, on a charcoal block to burn it's great to purify and cleanse your home and uh, also to rid your home of negative entities cloves also associated with uh, money as well so it does give you that expansion when it comes to your finances and your prosperity so use it perhaps along with bay so that you've got the expansion with the clove you've got the success with the bay and you're drawing in the money say with cinnamon uh, you can use more than one herb and just you can do a lot with just these five herbs seriously you can have the money you can have the love you can have the cleansing uh, with all of these herbs really it's just knowing when and how to use them uh, you don't necessarily need a whole lot of, of other fancy herbs um, from places you've um, you don't live in order to be able to work your magic so that's that for the five herbs um, be creative with it have fun think of think of at least five different ways that you can use these each one of those herbs for your spell work and uh, let me know in the comments field what they may be if you like the video hit the like button share it with your friends don't forget to subscribe I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com I'll see you on the next video blessed be mm -hmm.